Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am so excited to have this conversation tonight. I have been reading um, Diane Mills books for a long time now. Um, both of us started when we were very, very young. And so um, I don't even know how many she's written, but she has wor um, won numerous awards. Um, and every one of her books is full of action and adventure. Um, and that's probably why I like them. So my first question, I know I said I was gonna use another one first, but so how many books have you written? I forgot to ask you earlier. 89. 80? Yeah. Well, yeah, we both started, I, you know, we both started when we were what, three? Three, yes. Yes. So you have a new one coming out in a couple of weeks, Concrete Evidence, for those that don't know, um, beautiful cover behind you there. Um, so tell us a little bit about that book um, without giving too many spoilers away. <laughs> okay, without spoilers. <laughs> My uh, heroine is Avery Elliot III, the heroine. And she has been raised by her grandfather since she was 11. And that is Avery Elliot I. <laughs> uh, seriously, he has shown her love. He is a, a, a former Texas senator. He has, um, oh gosh, what, what all can I say? She, He's shown her respect. He didn't tell her, he showed her. Uh, currently, he is building uh, dams and he has a ranch in Texas. I mean, we have to have a ranch in Texas. But this is the clincher. She is riding out to see him as a surprise. And she hears a gunshot and she gets closer and she sees him standing over a man's body with a gun in his hand. What is she supposed to think? This is the man she adores, the man who talks to her about faith. That's my opener. Now my hero, FBI special agent, Mark Wilkins, Hasn't seen his dad since he was eight years old, but he's stuck going to the man's funeral with his mother. And at the close of the funeral, he apparently died of a heart attack. His mother says, Mark, I need for you to investigate this. This couldn't have been a, a heart attack. He was perfectly healthy. I just know it was a murder. You have to investigate this for me. You have to promise me that you'll investigate this. And off we go. Yes, and no pun intended, but your book starts with a bang in this one. Because <laughs> I, was, I was reading my copy of it, you know, for preparation for tonight too. And it was like, you know, I was, yeah, I know. It's like, yay. Um, I had started reading it and my husband was watching, I don't know, maybe the Tigers or something. and. It might have been football, but anyways, um, and I'm like, well, I'll get a couple chapters read and then I'll watch the game with them and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I loved it. And you know what? And I know you, I have said this to you before. I, I really enjoy your books. Oh, um, thank you. So thank I you. appreciate that. So um, I probably know the answer to this question a little bit because you have said this in other places, but with your books, I mean, the, the spiritual element is, element is very real, okay? It's very much part of their lives. Um, you know, you don't find sermons in your book. It's just the part of their life. But what is the takeaway that you want readers to have from either this book or is it something that encompasses always in your books? There are always two things that stand out foremost in my mind. Number one is forgiveness. We have to forgive. We forgive so that we will be forgiven. But in concrete evidence, there is a thread of what is the truth? And will learning the truth 
um, make me a better person or will I wish I didn't know it? And that is the thread that, that goes throughout the story. And I am a big proponent of, I've got to know the truth. And if it's something I don't want to hear, God will help me with it. But uh, that is really what I'm all about. And you may have heard me say this before, but I write Christian fiction because Jesus spoke in parables so that the people would understand. And I'm not the, the um, brightest light bulb in the bunch. And so I need an easier way to understand God's truths. And that is why I write fiction. But Chris, I have an idea. Okay. Can we, do a, idea. Can we do a giveaway? Yes, please. Okay. I, I've been thinking about this all day. So what about in the comments, if those who are viewing and listening, if you would write your favorite Diane Mills book, and you know what, because I want, everybody's a winner, I would like for those who have never read a Diane Mills book to say, I've never read one yet, and uh, uh, let, let's Let's do that. Can we give them just a couple of minutes? To yep. We'll go on and we'll let them comment. Um, okay. For those I don't know, wonderful. Becky um, from Baker works off site of these events. Um, so she will follow your comments on Zoom and Facebook. So if you're following us on Facebook, make sure you comment. Um, everybody has an equal chance. It's not the first one. She's going to do her little um drawing however they do that online um and so somebody will win and we'll know set a winner in a couple minutes but um let's move on to a different question about this book um do you have a favorite character in this book you know that's hard that's kind of asking like which one of my kids or my grandkids are my favorite <clears throat> um i really enjoyed avery's personality uh, she was humble, she was inquisitive, she was daring and courageous, you know, all the things we want to be. And I really enjoyed Mark because when he was confused and trying to figure things out, he just wouldn't quit. But there is a character who is very, very special, and her name is Tessa. Mark learns that he has a 15-year-old sister. And she is the atypical 15-year-old. I know because I have a granddaughter who was 16 yesterday. So she went through the 15. And Perfect. this this Tessa has had a hard life, but she's not letting it stop her. She's high-spirited. She is blunt. She is going to tell you just exactly how she feels about things. But she's so lovable. I I agree. I agree. So, um, and I did love, I have to admit, I still, I go back to Avery. And I think this is why I like your book. Your female characters are a person unto themselves. Do they fall in love or do they have family they care? Yes, which is great. But they, they can do their own thing. I mean, Tessa does too. I mean, even <laughs> with everything that happened with her, um, and I like people that write women that way. Um, you know, strong female characters. That's, you know, what are we telling ourselves when we can have to swoon to get something done? You know? Oh, 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 I do not <laughs> like that. To any unmarried women out there, you don't need a man to save you. You want a man to live life with you, to love God with you. So be courageous and do your thing. I'm getting all excited. Yeah. No, I'm having too much fun. <laughs> and we do. Um, we just got our winner in. Um, it's, okay. And if I if I slaughter anybody's last name, I apologize humbly. You can call me Chris Yeager from the until the day I die. Then we'll make up here. <laughs> um, it's Jesse Mathis. Um, oh. And then if you email. Event and this goes for our future winners, um, unless you want them to email you, Diane. But we can email um, here at Baker, and then we will get to the mailing addresses. Um, 
So just email, the, the winner should email events, E-E-E-N-T-S, I think Becky's putting it in the um, comments too, at bakerbookhouse.com. And just send us your address and we will get the prizes in the mail. Or I should say Diane, but. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're Becky. welcome. So fun. Oh. Yeah, so congratulations, Jessica, or Jesse. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I don't know. It's, oh, it's hard to read. Don't, I should put my glasses on. Yes, and I will not call you Chris Yeager. <laughs> nope. Sorry, it's the, it's the old J sound. So there you go. So, so you have, and I mean, the things you've done for research for this book and other books has got to be phenomenal because you always have FBI and the DEA. And so, so what kind of research do you do? And are you on a government watch list? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been cleared by the FBI. I, I, do, I do know that. And I imagine the ATF too, because I took both the FBI Citizens uh, Cadet Academy and the ATF. I took both of those. And no way. I, yes, I did. And it was so fun. Oh, the it FBI just sounds fun. Is, um, that, oh, that was so amazing. Uh, it was uh, several weeks of, of those agents who had worked specific divisions. If they worked uh, violent crime or um, or the civil rights or you know whatever it was, those agents were the ones who talked about this. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. ATF, amazing. There were two things in the ATF uh, that were really kind of funny. And number one, I'm not a real big person. I'm five two, and yeah. And so with the ATF, we went to a uh, indoor shooting range, not to do the lightweights, but the heavyweight, you know, guns. And I just could not, I, my aim was terrible. So finally they handed me, and I don't even remember what it was, but it was the same kind of, of uh, gun that Bonnie and Clyde used. Okay, and I hit that guy's heart every time. And they, the guys behind me, because there were four women in the class and 16 men. And these big old burly guys behind me, you know, were clapping. I didn't even know they were there. But